little, little blue line. There we go. And hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is day four of Longevity Week on Chef AJ Live. So we actually have an ageless vegan on the show, literally. She wrote the book called Ageless Vegan. She is the youngest guest on Longevity Week. She's only in her 50s. She's going to turn 56 soon, but she looks amazing. And we're going to find out why. Please welcome back to the show, Tracy McCorder. It's so great to see you again. Hey, AJ. Hey, everyone. It is great to be back. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Well, you know, it's funny because we're talking about aging gracefully and you, you literally wrote a book about it. <laughs> I did. And I have to say that I wrote that book with my mother. So that's why I felt like I could kind of get away with it because my mother is 30 years older than me. When we wrote Ageless Vegan, we were 50 and 80. So um, it was really an homage to her as well. You're, I, I love, I've, I've watched and listened to a few podcasts with your mom and I, I, I love your whole story because it sounds like healthy eating was something you were kind of really raised in, in a way, maybe not vegan, but you ate a lot healthier than most people around you. We did. My mother was really health conscious as an omnivore growing up. So um, I have two older sisters. My oldest sister, Veronica, um, when she was born, my mother started reading or before she was born, when my mom was pregnant, she started reading all about um, how to have a healthy pregnancy and how to raise a healthy child. She just was really interested in it. And so um, by the time I came, um, my sister's five years older than me. So we, you know, we didn't have like candy bowls. We didn't have uh, whole milk. We had skim milk. We had whole wheat bread. We had whole grain cereal, no sodas in the house. So yes, we were, very, and we cooked from scratch every day. If we went out to eat, it was once a week. So yes, we were very health conscious, lots of fruits and vegetables every day. And I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. You don't hate it anymore though. No, I don't hate it anymore. But I say that to say that there's hope for everybody, right? Because I certainly um, did not expect this to be my path when I was younger. And here I am. Right. And you've been vegan for, I think, at least 30 years now. Yeah, it'll be it'll be 36 years next year. That's Ooh, right. You're only nine years behind me. Congratulations. Ah, we're, o, we're OVs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we are. The, I love that. The vegan OGs. Yeah. But you, you, you know, I, I'm guessing you didn't eat a lot of sugar growing up. No, I did not. Um, we, I don't even know if we had a sugar bowl. I think we, we might've had a sugar bowl on the table, but no, we didn't. Like I said, we sweets, um, desserts, that was really like once a week, if that, um, and that's because my mother was addicted to sugar. So before, she had us, she was really into dessert, sweets, baked goods. And she actually went to a, uh, to OA with my aunt, her older sister, one of her older sisters, um, because she wanted to, to deal with the sugar addiction that she had. And it's really funny. I didn't know this until we wrote the book together and I interviewed her that she had this sugar addiction. And that's one of the reasons she became health conscious and we didn't have a lot of sugary things at home. Yeah. Well, your mom's aging well too. Yes. My mom just turned 86 and uh, she is still rocking and rolling doing, during her uh, online exercise classes three times a day, uh, five days a week. She walks every day. So of course she's still vegan. That's, that's going to be a given. So yes, I think that, um, you know, uh, COVID has made her less active and that, you know, as a senior, she's more cautious. So she's, uh, so that's changed a little bit, but hopefully um, we don't know what's going to happen actually with these pandemics, but you know, we're all adjusting, but she has, um, she's doing her things online now. I'm guessing your mom has, I, I would love, I will, I would have loved to have her on the show, but I'm guessing she is out living her friends and living healthier than her friends. Um, 
Yes, but I don't know that that's something that she would probably say if she were on the show, like her and her siblings as well, just because of her nature, you know, but I, I, I think that that's probably true. Um, and she's definitely um, always available and sharing with them if they ask, if they're interested. She's all, she's always, she'll be watching this. She's always, um, you know, in our, our 21 day program, I'm sure we'll talk about, she's always on um, listening on our breakout calls. So yeah, she's always available to give advice and to share, but yes, I, I, I would say overall that that's probably true. But well, the thing is, even if she won't admit that, I bet you she looks and feels great. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You you can vouch for that, I'm sure. As as do you, because you you. I mean, I met you many years ago in Marshall, Texas. Might have been over ten years ago, and and and, and time has definitely stood still for you. And I wonder if you think that the fact that you eat so well has anything to do with it. Because I heard you once say, "It's your greens, not your genes." <laughs> Yeah, that's one of my mantras, absolutely. And uh, you have you say something similar as well. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's definitely true. I mean, that's you know, besides just our physical selves being outside in nature, that is our closest connection to nature, right? The foods that we put in our mouths, and we want them to be as natural as possible. And yes, we know that, or or hopefully more and more people are are learning that the healthier we eat the more we age well, we experience a better quality of life. We have a greater chance for longevity. We have less of a chance for cognitive decline. I mean, there's the, the common things that folks expect to happen with age don't have to happen or don't have to happen as quickly, don't have to happen at all if you're eating whole food plant-based. I mean, it's, it's not 100%, but it's probably the closest that we have. What do you think it is about whole, eating whole foods that make us look better as we age? Or maybe what do you think it is about what most Americans eat, which are animal products and processed food, which age us? Right. Well, there, it's really interesting because um, we know that things like dark leafy greens, dark berries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, like these are the, these are the foods that that when we eat them, they help to improve cognitive decline. Like, you know, Michael Greger has his fabulous nutritionfacts.org site that has these videos about all of these um, studies. And we all, you know, look at those to share that information with our communities. But yes, the science is there. Dark leafy greens are the healthiest foods on the planet. Those are going to help us stay, stay uh, alert. They're going to help us stay uh, strong. All of these foods, all of these whole plant-based foods have phytonutrients, antioxidants. They have individual properties that when you eat them together with other whole food plant, whole plant-based foods, they work kind of as a symphony, right? We haven't isolated all of the nutrients, but we don't need to. We know that when we eat them together, we eat colorful foods most of the time, high fiber, nutrient rich foods, they give our bodies what we need to thrive. Um, and meat and dairy products, the more we eat them, the more risk we have for the common diseases that folks die from, heart disease, stroke, um, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, uh, certain cancers, diabetes, unhealthy weight. Um, so, Yes, we want to eat all whole food plant-based or as much as possible. I, I mean, I think the evidence has been clear for mm, going on 60 to 70 years now in terms of the studies, but you know, this is an ancient way to eat as well. It's also the future. <laughs> <laughs> an ancient, it's like you, you also wrote another book by another, you, you, you've, I think you've won as far as like the best titles for books, but by any greens necessary. Yet I find that greens is not a food that most people eat. You know, what's really funny is that um, I have not had that experience. And, uh, I, and I think it's because this was actually an interesting Thing that I learned, I think, from one of Michael's Michael Greger's videos on nutrition facts, that Black women eat the most dark leafy greens of any of any demographic in this country, right? And that has been my experience growing up. So even as omnivores, greens are a big part of our diets, right? Um, and but probably overall, people don't eat enough fruit. 
They don't eat enough uh, vegetables in general, probably more potatoes as French fries than anything else or, or iceberg lettuce, maybe romaine. But yeah, dark leafy greens, that, that might be true. Um, but just from my experience, it's been the opposite of that. That's so interesting. Well, because I don't think I ever ate greens growing up. I mean, like I ate vegetables, but when I think of greens, like the leafy ones, you know, kale, collard, turnip greens, mustard, you know, those. I mean, I, I didn't eat those till I was actually in my 50s. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Growing up, even having, you know, these big Sunday dinners at my grandmother's house after church. Um, we all, you know, there was always meat and um, some kind of meat like mac and cheese, potato salad, cornbread. There was always some kind of greens, turnips, mustards. Um, oh gosh, uh, kale, dandelion, um, any chard, like so just different types of greens. I mean, they were always cooked to death, but we had them and we drank the pot liquor too. So that was a good thing. <laughs> I love that you said that, Tracy, because that is my morning beverage. Every I love oh. pot liquor. I didn't even learn about it till I spoke at the New Orleans of Edgefest that it was a thing. But yeah. I, my husband eats greens for breakfast every day. I, I eat them too, but I don't eat usually until lunch. And oh. I drink the I drink the broth, the liquid, and it's warm and it's delicious. I yes, love yes. pot liquor. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. So I tell people just start now. If that's how you're making your greens, drink that. Right. Eat all of it. Put those stems in there. Um, save those stems if you don't want to have them in your salad or in something raw and, you know, simmer those and drink that. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah, if we could, I don't even think I ever heard of kale until I was like in my forties, to be honest, you know? Yeah, we had, we had poke greens. I'm trying to think of all the greens. I probably didn't know all of the names because I didn't like them, you know, but I know we had them. And also just, you know, all the vegetables. Oh my gosh, Brussels sprouts, stream beans, uh, all the green vegetables, broccoli, my mom, my peas, my mom had for us. Yeah, I love that by any greens necessary. Well, you know, when I hear Dr. Furman talk, he says Americans eat like less than 10% of their calories from fruits and vegetables. That's, yeah. probably, that's dismal. It's dismal and it's so, you know, we know some of the reasons are that you know, the food industry, the USDA, it's all about profit over health, greed over health, over people. And they push processed foods, snack foods, junk foods, unhealthy foods, because they can make money from them. They can make the federal subsidies, make them cheap. So I, what I try to do and, and you and, and our colleagues as well is to, is to let folks know that this is more than just personal taste. We, we are targeted to eat these unhealthy foods. And once folks know that and have an understanding of that, my experience is that they want to do better right away. So they want to change something, but they just have not had the same information you know, that, that we have been privy to all these years. Well, I think you're right, Tracy. It's the unhealthy foods that are so addictive that, that kind of sets the tone with our palate that makes things like greens unpalatable. They're really not unpalatable, but if all you're eating is sugar, fat, and salt, good luck eating steamed greens. It's so true. And I think that that's, I, that's, that's right on the money. That's exactly right. And the more of whatever you eat, the more you want that. And then of course there are addictive foods. Anything that has fat, a lot of fat, salt and sugar is going to be addictive. And so the less you eat of that, the less you want to have that and vice versa. So, and it doesn't take a long time. And that's why there's so many 14 day, seven day, 21 day, 30 day programs because if you're able to do it for a period of time you take away those processed unhealthy foods and you incorporate healthy whole foods with actual ingredients and actual spices, dried herbs, fresh herbs, the seasonings, um, your taste buds will change. And then if you try to introduce those high fat salt, um, high fat, high salt, high sugar foods back into your palate, back into your, your plate, your rotation, immediately you will see how um, you may not want that anymore or how strong it is. And, but before it was just your normal, right? So it doesn't take long to change that. 
I agree 100%. You are doing something called the Global Health Intervention for Black Women. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so I, um, you mentioned my Buy Any Greens Necessary book. So in 2020, that was the 10 year anniversary. And I wanted to do something special to mark that. And so I thought of helping 10,000, just playing off uh, the 10 year anniversary, 10,000 black women go vegan because that was the first vegan diet book focused on black women. So I wanted to, for the anniversary, help 10,000 black women go vegan. Uh, together online for 21 days. So I launched it in February, 2020, COVID happened. We moved it back thinking, oh, it'll be over soon. Um, but we continued, we ended up having it in October. We had 12,000 women sign up uh, a week before the program started. And as expected for the, for the women who followed through and did the entire program, they had tremendous health benefits, right? So they were able to lower their cholesterol, their blood pressure. Some were able to reduce or get off of medication. Some had better mental clarity. They enjoyed cooking more. They cooked fruits and vegetables more. The, all, the whole nine yards. So we, we do these post surveys and, and, and pre surveys and collect the data so the women themselves can see the changes. Um, so based on that success, I decided to start a nonprofit um, last year called 10 Million Black Vegan Women because I thought, what is something that I'd like to see uh, in, the, in the next 10 years? Like I, you know, I've been doing this work like you for a very long time. I probably will always do it in some form, but, but not as a profession. And so what would I love to see right now? And I would love to see at least that many black women go vegan. Um, and so that's, it, it, you know, it's a number, even if I'm not able to do it in the next 10 years, it's a bold kind of shocking number <clears throat> and it shows the urgency I think of the of of why this is uh, that this is needed right and encourages people to find out more about the program and so our first um, program is a free 21 day vegan fresh start so again we are going online together a few times a year um, thousands of women at black women at a time going vegan together and it's a pretty thorough program so we actually just launched it this week on Sunday so we're in our first week and I'm very excited about that so that's the program and I and I wanted it to be free this 21 day will always be free for for all the years that we have this program will have other levels coming up that will have some nominal uh, paid programs. And part of that money will be used for women who aren't able to pay. Um, but I wanted the entry program to always be free so that there's no barrier, um, you know, and, and everyone can get their feet wet. And I think one of the unique things about the program is that um, while it can be DIY, we are actually promote community building. We are doing this together. We have an online platform on Circle where we talk to each other every day and share our progress. So we have meal plans, recipes, grocery shopping lists. Um, um, we have cooking instructors, actually the Physicians Committee uh, for Responsible Medicines, Food for Life cooking instructors. We have five black women who've gone through that program who do live and pre-recorded cooking videos. We have complimentary fitness classes pre-recorded and live. There's a lot going on um, in these 21 days. That sounds fabulous. How does somebody enroll in this program? So they go to 10 million blackveganwomen.org slash fresh start. That's our landing page. And they can sign up right from there. Even though we started on Sunday, people can sign up for the first two weeks because the whole first week is all about mental and kitchen preparation. So we actually don't start eating vegan until the second week. So we get all those fabulous results, health benefits for the women, actually for only eating 14 days of, of whole food plant-based vegan. That's great. I'll make sure that the link is both in the chat and the show notes. Thank you. Do you, I obviously you look great and I know you feel great, but do people ever say to you, well, you know, it's genetic, you know, that's why you look so good. Your mom looks good. Everybody in your family looks good. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they seem to not realize that 
we, we do participate in our own aging process. Yeah, I, you know, my I do have very, very good looking parents. So I, I, I say, you know, I recognize that and I'm grateful for that. But, you know, what do you do with that? <laughs> you know, um, that's just, you know, that, that's just my opinion. You know, that's what I think. I think we have a good looking family. Um, but it doesn't mean that we're healthy, right? It doesn't mean that we're going to age healthfully. It does, and even if we're, you know, thin compared to other people, it doesn't mean that we're healthy just because we're thin, right? So um, there are lots of folks who are walking around with what is considered a healthy weight that have high blood pressure, high cholesterol on medication, you know, have some chronic diseases that can be prevented. So uh, it's really what is going on inside, right? And how you are, how you, what control you have taken, you know, when it comes to having good health and maintaining it. So absolutely, you know, it, what it, food is, is the foundation, even when you're talking about other healthy lifestyle habits, like not smoking, exercising, relaxing, food is so important. It is the foundation. Even if you are a whole food plant-based eater as a couch potato, you may be doing better than an omnivore who is, um, you know, eats a heavy meat and dairy-based diet and is very athletic and active because they can still be clogging their arteries, right? And you are not. Um, so yes, it, food is so, so important. And I will also say this because the program is for black women we are the current face of veganism. We're the fastest growing vegan demographic. Uh, that's what the latest research says from a Pew Research Center study in 2016. African-Americans are the fastest growing vegan demographic at 8% as compared to 3% of Americans overall. And of that uh, group, it's estimated that black women are in the majority, right? Which would make us the, the current face of veganism based on that study. That said, the majority of us are still eating the standard American diet, right? So not only is that problematic in terms of uh, our health, but we're also dealing with white supremacy, right? We're dealing with systematic injustices in this country that also creates oxidative stress in our bodies daily. So um, we are dealing in that that it's kind it's also called weathering, right? So that also ages us prematurely. So what I say to people is it's not only that you are trying to, you know, improve your health, maintain your health through, you know, as long as you live so that you can improve the quality of life, but you are also then combating this oxidative stress from uh, living in this society and, and all that we have to deal with, right? Because that is taking its toll as well. So um, that's another thing that we talk about in the program that, you know, this is another way that you can take back control of your health. Can, can certain foods cause oxidative stress? Absolutely. In meat and dairy based foods, um, high, uh, highly processed foods can cause oxidative stress. That's why it's so important to eat a whole food plant based diet. Um, so you have these two things working together, right? You, you are dealing with oxidative stress from society, from internal and environmental factors. And food is a way to combat that in your body. Are, are, what about foods like sugar and alcohol? Do they cause oxidative stress more so than fruits and vegetables? Absolutely. I feel like you're pitching me these softball questions and you, <laughs> your audience already knows. <laughs> well, yeah. It's just because, you know, it's funny because, you know, I don't know if you've been watching this week. I've had Karen Calabrese. I've had uh, I the chef yeah. of that. I've had Linda Middlesworth. And these are all people in their 80s. They're like 20 years older than you. And what I'm noticing, there's a theme. It's not just that they're vegan, but they they avoid, they're avoiding things like alcohol, caffeine, sugar. So, you know, I think that's important for people even that aren't vegan to understand that these foods are, I believe they're aging because when I worked in retirement homes, I saw the difference between people that drank alcohol, ate sugar, and those that didn't. I mean, you know, I can't believe it's just genetics. It, you're absolutely right. And, and uh, maybe I shouldn't have said that these are softball questions. And I, but for us, you know, we know that. But there are a lot of people, vegans included, who are eating a highly processed diet, vegan diet. And they're not 
they don't understand the importance of whole food plant-based, you're right. And, and then even within that, um, oils, sugars, salt, alcohol, absolutely. So there's a spectrum when it comes to, to veganism, right? You want to eat the healthiest, you want to eat the healthiest foods we know are available, right? And so that means that even as a vegan, it doesn't mean that your diet is healthy. And so we, it's, it's really so interesting because I'm always trying to, for each birthday that I have, so my birthday is the end of this month, I'm always thinking first about, okay, so how can I tweak my diet? That's like something that I do every year, right? So what, if, what have I been doing that I wanna let go of? If I'm really stressed out, what, you know, and I've been snacking more, what do I need to let go of that? Like, so that's something that, that's a check-in that I have with myself to see how I can tweak my own diet. Um, and that, because that's my new year. And so that's something really that I encourage people to do, whether they're omnivores or already vegan. What do you know to do already that you can, um, you know, to improve the health that you have to improve your diet? So if you know that you're eating more fried foods or more snack foods, you're adding poured oils and you know that you can use water or low sodium broth or homemade broth instead, you know that you've been drinking wine. I never drank alcohol, so that's not an issue for me. Um, but you know, for, for folks who do, do you reach for that when you're stressed out in the evenings to help you relax? How can you do something else? Can you drink tea instead? So ask, so ask yourselves these questions about how you can tweak. And for me, my birthday is that time. That's great. I, I'm, I'm always thinking, how can I add more greens too? like, you, you know, what I love about what you're saying is because Dr. the last speaker on longevity week are the Esselstyns and they are also fans of greens, not just every day, but at every meal. Yes. I try to eat greens three times a day. And even so in the morning, I add them to my smoothie. Um, I have them in a salad or wrap you know, for lunch and in the evenings, I'll have them again in a salad or a wrap or a stir fry. Um, what else might I have? I'll put them on, if, I'm, if it's Friday night and I'm making pizza myself, I'll throw some, um, some greens on there. Just, I'm always trying to think of ways to add dark leafy greens. Absolutely. That's, that's kind of what I was trying to stress in, in, in by any greens necessary, you're right. But also for folks who don't have access to dark leafy greens, um, who may be traveling, I like to use powdered greens. Like I always take powdered greens with me on my trips um, so that I'm always able to pour some powdered greens, organic powdered greens in water and drink that um, so that I'm not so that I'm not far away from getting the nutrients in green. So yes. Absolutely. Three times a day is what I aim for, at least twice a day, for sure. And all kinds of greens, all kinds of greens. You can even think of, um, you know, fresh basil. You can think of arugula, um, any, kind of, any kind of dark leafy green, whatever, experiment and see what you like best. But, you know, just try to get a variety in throughout the week. Absolutely. And that's, that's to, me too. When I try, I don't use powdered greens on a daily basis, but whenever yeah. I travel, especially on the cruise, I would always take it. You can even get kale powder dehydrated at, at, at stores. Absolutely. You can get kale, wheatgrass, all kinds of greens. Absolutely. Which is, which is fabulous. So there's no excuse y'all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Hope says I joined Tracy's 21 day program on Sunday. I'm impressed with the wealth of material offered for a free program. Good vibes. Oh, thank you, Hope. Thanks for joining us. I love that. I love that. Folks are always saying, uh, you know, I'm so surprised that it's this, whatever, thorough and organized, you know, to be free, but that, but you know, this, this, it, this should be free. I'm able to make it free because we, uh, have some great grant funders for this program, but this is something that should be available to everybody for free if possible. So, um, you know, I, I'm, that's how I like to roll. I like my, my programs, anything that I do to be as awesome as it would, free as paid, it doesn't matter. 
That's great. Do you, do you have to be a black woman to join your program? Yes, you do. If you are, a, it is for black women. If you are a black woman, we invite you to join and to tell the other black women in your life about it and encourage them to join. If you are not a black woman, I encourage you to tell the black women in your life about this program and encourage them to join as well. So please share, share, share. All right, well, the link is in the chat. It's in the show notes. And Molly says, I am in for the 10,000 Black Women Go Vegan. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Renee says, is there a 10 million Black women? Oh, vegan, vegan. Is there one for ve Black vegan men, she's asking. Oh, I, no, not that I am doing, but, but there are lots of Black vegan men who have, um, who have their own programs. We don't have a partner one, but that's something I've been asked ab about and maybe that will happen. Um, in the meantime though, there's so many wonderful black vegan men, influencers, doc physicians, um, athletes, nutritionists to follow on Instagram um, that are connected with us that you can find out more about. And also I wanna, since you asked that question, there's a book called Brother Vegan that I highly recommend. It's a collection of essays by Black men who are vegan about veganism. Nice. Terrific. You know, in addition to greens three times a day, I want to make sure I heard you correctly when you said your mother exercises three times a day. Was that three times a day or three times a week? A day. Three times oh. a day. So that, so before COVID, she was walking to her senior center and back and doing exercise, doing three exercise classes a day. And when COVID happened, it went online. And so they had the, they have those classes still online. And yes, she does those classes three times a day, in addition to getting up in the morning and walking. That's amazing. <laughs> what, 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 what kind of fitness classes are, is, is your mom doing? Aerobics, weight training, Pilates, Tai Chi, uh, what else? And then, you know, she doesn't, she's, she's doing, you know, if they're, if they're chair aerobics, she's standing up and doing the exercises, you know, she wants, she wants the most active one. She does, um, what do you, she does crunches. She does, um, sit-ups, everything. I mean, what, you know, and she, that's with her senior center. She's also doing online classes with the Y. So yeah, she's very active. She does more than, than her three daughters. <laughs> Do I have it right that your mom actually went vegan when she was 50? She did. Um, she went vegan when she was 50 with me. So when I heard Dick Gregory's lecture my sophomore year in college in 1986, I actually called my mom and one of my sisters who was a senior at Tufts University at the time and told them about the lecture and, and said, you know, I think I'm gonna go vegan. And so my mom already being health conscious was very interested in, in that. And when I came home for the summer, a few months later, we three read all of the books that we could. This is 10 years before we had the internet. And we read them that whole summer and decided that what Dick, Gre Dick Gregory was saying was true and that we should be, you know, vegetarian. And so, my mom actually had some cousins and a sibling, her brother who died, who had just recently died of heart attacks as well. And they were 50 and 51 and she was 50. And so that was also a wake up call for her as well. And so she started researching on her own about the links between meat and cancer and, and dairy. So she was already on that path because that was such a scare for her because they were so close in age. So yes, yeah, she did start in her fifties um, with me, but you know, I say that I helped my mom go vegan, but my mom planted the earliest seeds for me to be health conscious. So when Dick Gregory came to our campus in 86 to talk about veganism, why black folks in particular should go vegan, it wasn't unfamiliar to me. And I think that that was part of the reason that I was so um, receptive to it. Yeah. He was amazing. I loved his books and his teaching. Boy, wouldn't it be great to have him on the show, you know? 
Oh yeah, it would have been. It would have been. But it been um, yeah, it would it would have been amazing. And um, he his exactly his books were so, cooking with Mother Nature. Um, his other books they were so powerful. He partnered with Dr. Alvina Fulton to write Cooking with Mother Nature in 1974, and she introduced him to veganism for health reasons. He went vegetarian. He went uh, vegan first in '65 because he extended the practice of compassion from the not from the civil rights movement, compassion and nonviolence to animals. But he still was a self-professed overeater, drinker, smoker, as we talked about. And then two years later, she introduced him to veganism for health reasons. And she lived. Dr. Fulton lived. She was a naturopathic doctor. She opened the first known health food and vegetarian establishment on the south side of Chicago in 1958. And she learned from her grandparents. She lived well into her 90s. Um, and she was just a wonderful example of longevity. And she even said, you know, uh, my peers teased me. They didn't understand. And they're either gone or in wheelchairs now. Yeah, absolutely. So we have a nice comment about you. Tracy's skin is just flawless and glowing. Now, is that genetic or do you think those greens really do help our skin? I think they do. It's the greens. The, gl the glow is in the greens. Thank you so much for that comment. I appreciate that. And when I was in college and in high school, I had pimples. I had acne and it cleared up when I went vegan in my, uh, in, in my early twenties that, you know, my, my senior year in college. And then that year, the following year. So it definitely has made a difference. That is what did it for sure. And, um, fortunately I've been able to, to maintain it. That's amazing. Are you as avid an exerciser as your mom? No, that's my, that's my struggle. I mean, my mom has, my mom has the fitness and the food piece together and I struggle with fitness. I like to dance. I like to hula hoop. I like to roller skate. I like to do things. I like to hike. I like to do things where I am getting exercise, but I don't necessarily like to go to exercise classes or to the gym, that kind of thing. But I do it. But I'm, I'm not a, it's, you know, that mental thing hasn't happened for me. It's something that I know I, I must do. And so I do it, but my mom enjoys it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. She does. Other than, other than the greens, do you have any beauty secrets for hair or skin? Or uh, you know what? I, um, uh, well, first of all, I try, I, I try to use um, any kind of cosmetics from more natural sources. That's kind of a struggle you know, for many of us, I, I, I found one that uses food, that uses fruit pigmentation, that kind of thing, um, that's the least toxic. So, but I, I don't, you know, I, I kind of stopped using foundation. So this is just shea butter, right, that I use on my skin. And um, getting a lot of good sunshine helps with, with protection, of course. But that's basically what I use. I use um, whipped shea butter and I use uh, a cure rose and argon oil on my skin and, and my hair. So just those two things. And really it's, and I had a friend actually who passed away recently, my closest friend who used to always tell me to use oil on my skin, you know, after I washed it. And I would never do it because I have oily skin and I just didn't understand. And he, his skin was beautiful and he had oily skin and it was, and he always used oil. And if he was sitting, you know, if he was sitting with you and on, you know, eating with you at a glass table, he would leave oily fingerprints. And I was just like, I don't want to be that person. But um, I started using it and it just, he was right it works wonders. So argon oil, rose oil, and whipped shea butter. That's what I use for my hair and skin. Well, maybe you'll have a, a ageless <laughs> vegan beauty line one day. You know, um, I have been asked about that. I, I have thought about that before, even before the pandemic. So you never know. You never know. What about you? Have you thought about that? 
Well, I mean, I, I you know, the old, it's funny that as I age, I, I wear a lot less makeup. I mean, I do put a little bit of powder on, you know, for this show because there's a light here and maybe yeah. some of but gosh, the older I get, the, the more simplified everything gets from my eating to my makeup and hair. It's just, I just, I just want things to be easy. So yeah. Hey, hey there. This, the, I don't know that I have the energy to do that. You know what I mean? I'm the same. I used to really, you know, have the eyeshadow, the foundation, the concealer, all of that. And I think COVID changed that for me. I was just like, eh. I don't want to yeah. do all of that anymore. <laughs> There's been an idea of like a, a, vet, a, a makeup line made out of just fruits and vegetables. That's very intriguing. Yeah, it's um, 100% pure cosmetics. Um, that's what I use. They, they actually need to have more for women of color, especially for, um, you know, browner skin women. But I, that's what I've been, that's the, the brand I've been using. And I don't really shout out brands that much, which is why I didn't mention it the first time. But, um, you know, there may be others as well. That's just one that I happen to have found. Yeah. Tracy wants to know, do you do any meditation? And if so, how do you do it? I do. Thank you for that. So I try to meditate every day. I'm, a, I'm an anxious person. I'm a worrier. And so I really feel, and I'm somebody who would easily roll out of bed and do work, right? So I have to make myself do med, especially when it, a busy season like this, when we when we're launching our our 21 day program. And so I have to make a conscious effort to do my sacred seven, and that is meditating, journaling, sleeping well, eating well. Uh, exercising, laughing, and um, serving others, you know, doing something for someone else. And so the meditation part is so key. What I try to do in the mornings is set my timer for 20 minutes. And after I exercise and, oh, and say what I'm grateful for, that I say what I'm grateful for every morning while I'm still in bed when I wake up. Um, I'll just, I'll, I'll lay in bed or I'll lay on my yoga mat and I will meditate. And that's basically closing my eyes and focusing on something. So uh, an image of my favorite ocean, a, a lit candle, or I'll just start working down my body from my toes, you know, up to my head and back so that I can quiet the thoughts that are coming through. But that's what I do. And it's, it, or I'll go walking and I, you know, kind of do a walking meditation. And it's so, I always feel so much better when I do that, when I start my day that way, as opposed to just starting my day. So that's what I do. Right. Well, so, so, you know, it seems like, um, like Dr. Goldhammer says, health results from healthy living. Yes, I do believe for me and for so many other folks, it may be, may have been the same for you. AJ, that uh, veganism is a path, it's a window, a door, it's a practice, and it's opened up other things. So even in my early 20s, when I went vegan, I started meditating after that. I actually started doing yoga after that, and I actually became a yoga teacher. I was a yoga teacher in my 20s and 30s, um, you know, just part-time while I was a museum director. I just became interested in other health uh, practices. I, I sought out spirituality. So absolutely, yes, it can lead you to so many other um, health practices. Absolutely. Tracy says, do you use sunscreen? I do, of course. Absolutely. Yes, I do. I, I think sun can age your skin faster than just about anything else. Say that again, AJ. I think that sun can age your skin faster than anything else. Oh, yes. I learned very early on uh, that I, you know, that I burn and can easily burn. In fact, um, it's so, so important. And, you know, sometimes I, earlier on, I was like, oh, I'll just use oil. Nope, not enough. I'll just use shea butter. I'll just use mineral oil or something like that. But, you know, no, I need sunscreen or I'll burn. Yeah. What is your exercise routine, if I may ask? So um, it depends. So right now, um, we the person who is doing our uh, free fitness classes for our 21 day program is Coach Stacy J, a Fit Life Squad, and so she actually was my personal trainer um, 
uh, before COVID and then we went online. So I'm doing her online program. So she mixes it up, stretching, cardio, um, squats. Oh my goodness. Um, there's some yoga, there's some Pilates, there's aerobics. So it just depends on what she's doing during the day. Yeah. I love people are saying they love your co quote, the glow is in the greens or the greens. Oh, are thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely, I definitely, definitely believe that. And I mean, we know that it, the, the, the foods that you eat, red foods, uh, orange foods, those foods show up that, you know, that healthy glow shows up on your skin and, and greens have all of the colors, right? So the more greens you get, the healthier glow you will have. I agree. Cause I, I look at even 10 years ago before I was eating so many greens, my, my, this, the, the, my skin looks better than it did when I was younger, especially when I was eating sugar. I don't think sh you look, I don't know. I, I think sugar really ages you and greens really make you youthful. I, it's just, they're opposite foods in my opinion. I agree. I agree. Sugar, sugar. And I absolutely agree with that. And I think that more folks don't understand how, much sugar is in so many products that they wouldn't expect it to be in even tomato sauce. I mean, just unnecessary. It's crazy. If there's more, I, I read that there's more sugar in a jarred tomato sauce than in two Oreos and Oreos happen to be vegan, although I don't recommend them very right, much. Exactly. And who would think that, right? But it's true. So reading food labels is so important and avoiding sugar, eliminating sugar um, as much as possible. I absolutely agree. That's my, I mean, I don't, I don't uh, buy things with sugar. I don't have things in my home, but if I eat out uh, at a vegan restaurant and there, you know, there may be something in sugar, not a dessert, but just a sauce. Right. And sometimes I ask, sometimes I don't. Um, but it's absolutely something that might be in there that, and I, because they've added it and I don't, and I don't know, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it's true. Yeah, absolutely. How many greens do you buy and how do you store them so they don't go bad? Good question. So I usually will buy um, two to three packs uh, of different greens a week and I store them in, so I'll wash them in my uh, sink in a bowl. I soak them in water and vinegar a couple of times, and then I dry them in my salad spinner and soak them in my, and keep them in my salad spinner. So um, sometimes I'll juice them right away. I like juiced dandelion or blended dandelion greens. So I'll blend them, not juice them in my Vitamix with water. And then I'll pour them in my different mason jars and have those for the week or freeze them. But usually, um, you know, just me, it's it's not going to be more than, than three packs a day, right? And I try to, I mean, three packs in a week. When I go grocery shopping that day, that Sunday or that Saturday, I'll buy three packs and I'll use, try to use those during the week. Well, you got your to a three pack a day habit, are you? <laughs> <laughs> that might be good, but I haven't, no, I'm not able to do that for sure. That's funny. Tracy, what do you think when people have resistance to changing their diet to go vegan or even just eat more plants? What do you think the main uh, resistance is for so many people? I think, oh gosh, such a good question. So what I found is that people will think that it's not going to taste good they'll think that it's too expensive and they'll think that it's inconvenient. Also that it might socially isolate them, right? Because no one else around them is doing it. And so they don't wanna be the odd person out. They don't know how to eat out with friends as a vegan. But the taste is the taste and the cost is you are usually the two things. And I tell people that they're already eating vegan food. Like it's not alien, it's familiar to them. If they are, using, if they eat fruit, vegetables, nuts, beans, grains, whole grains, um, but even refined grains are already eating grains, right? So we're, we're asking them to eat whole grains instead of refined grains, and then to eat more fruits, vegetables, beans, and nuts, right? If they're seasoning their food with dried herbs or fresh herbs, uh, those whole grain flour, those things are, are whole grains, you know, to um, whole grain flours, for whatever reason, those things are already vegan. So they're already eating vegan food and they may be eating more vegan food than meat and dairy, 
um, you know, if you consider the seasonings. So that's what I try to tell people that um, you're already eating vegan foods is familiar when it comes to, so just eat more of them and, you know, get help doing that in, in programs like ours that we have and books and those kinds of things. Um, and then in terms of cost, if you're eating whole food plant-based and you're buying things from the bulk bins in stores, if you're getting your whole grains or your beans, your herbs from the bulk bin, then it can be cheaper than buying them proce than buying processed and, and packaged foods that you're used to. Getting organic and fresh vegetables and fruit are best if you're able to do that. Frozen is next. That can be inexpensive. If you can't get organic, don't let that be a reason to not get the food. Do the best that you can. So, um, yeah, it's really a mind. It's really a mindset shift. You know, um, a lot of people just have an instant barrier up. No, I couldn't do that. Well, how about you just try it for a time and then see how you feel, right? Instead of putting that that lifelong block up, just try it. See how you feel for seven days, 14 days, 21 days, 30, 30 days, and let your body tell you if this is something you want to continue. Absolutely. I agree with you. People say like vegan food is some kind of foreign food. Like have you ever eaten guacamole or salsa? I mean, you know, exactly. like all the condiments, they're all, you know, people do eat vegan food. They just don't think of it as oh, that. That way. Exactly. And yeah. look, you have a strawberry. Do people, you know, do you eat strawberries? Yes. Or banana. And yeah. there's people eat vegan food, but they don't think of it. They don't classify it that way if they're not vegan, I suppose. I, I appreciate what you said about the resistance might be for some people that it's going to be inconvenient or costly. And I would remind people that having cancer or diabetes is also very inconvenient and very costly. Right. And I think that a lot of people don't understand the association between what they eat and getting these chronic diseases. I do believe and I, I mean, I, I, I know that as a fact from folks that I've, I've worked with that they don't understand this direct connection that can be, that can exist, right? It can increase your risk, risk. of these chronic diseases if you're eating meat and dairy. And I just, where are folks gonna hear that? They just don't know. They think that these are just inevitable signs of aging. And if they're not, they're absolutely not. And so I think just getting, just when folks, are able to understand that and have that sink in, they understand then that they have control over how they age. That's true, absolutely true. Question, what if you don't have a salad spinner? You can buy pre-washed organic greens these days at places yeah. like Trader Joe's and Whole Foods, yeah. even you, at regular markets. You can buy, you can absolutely do that. You can um, buy pre-washed, triple washed, double washed, um, whatever those, you know, whatever those brands are. Um, and you, you know, you can do it the old fashioned, old fashioned way and use a towel to dry your greens. So you don't have to have a salad spinner. Absolutely. When you say people you work with, do you work with people individually in groups? What, what do you do like on a daily basis? I used to do that. I used to work with people, you know, throughout this this 35 years of, of teaching folks, I've done a variety of things. So, and, and working with people one-on-one, -on -one, working with schools, with parents, with um, cafeteria workers, um, with organizations like PCRM. So I've, I've done this work in a number of ways. Um, but now with this nonprofit that I started last year, this is the primary work that I do. So this 10 million black vegan women movement. And so this is working with groups of women with, you know, try, uh, globally helping them um, go and stay vegan. That's fantastic. Do you have a favorite part of what you do? Do you like the speaking? Do you like the writing? What do you like to do? Uh, I love writing. So writing is my first love. So I'd love that part, creating content, tweaking content. My team will, I'm always editing and, and things uh, up until we post them. Um, but yes, I love the writing part, the sharing the information and making it as, um, as compassionate language is so important to me and how we share this information is so important. So I'm always conscious of not presenting this as lack, but showing people that, that they have agency and grace and there's history and context and content with this. Um, 
uh, especially for, for Black folks and Black women. And really, I think it's for me also when we have conversations with the women who do the program. So we, when we have breakout rooms, when we bring them on screen with us and we hear their stories, we, we start out with writing a letter to our future vegan selves. Why do we wanna go vegan? Or if you're already vegan, why do you wanna stay vegan? So we have lots of opportunities for the women to share with each other on screen why they want to do this. And I love that it's so uh, moving and inspiring to me and to the, to our team and to the other women in the program. That is, that is what I look forward to the most. Fantastic. Here's a great question by somebody also named Tracy, who's been asking wonderful questions. I, I know. Thank you. It's spelled in, yeah, the spelling of your name is unusual. That's, that's my mama. What can I tell you? Yeah, yeah, I bet, yeah, but um, she spells it E-Y, you spell it Y-E, yeah. and she says, and this is a great question for every, um, I think a lot of people struggle with this, especially if they're new to being vegan, what do you do when you attend family get-togethers, social events, and there are no vegan options? Yeah, so what, there are a couple of things that you can do, so you can eat beforehand, you can eat afterwards. You can bring your vegan food. Those are three things that you can do. It depends on what the situation is, right? So if it's a family gathering, like a holiday function, uh, you know, any kind of November, December holiday, if it's a, a, a funeral, if it's a wedding, if it's a birthday a kind of celebration, you can eat before, you can eat after, or you can bring your own food or you can bring food for yourself and for others to share. The, the thing about that is you determine how this goes. You determine how this situation goes, right? And as a new vegan, it can be awkward to say, to, to not eat. It can be awkward to turn down food. I understand all of that. We went through all of that 35 years ago when we started out. So uh, a lot of people do but your ease and confidence sets the tone. You decide how you want to eat. You don't have to change anything for other people just as they're not changing for you, right? So if you wanna bring vegan food for yourself, do that. If you wanna pick up vegan food on the way and bring it and go to the kitchen and set your plate and then come out, do that. Do whatever is comfortable for you and you can be very gracious about it. Oh no, I'm good, I brought my own food. And let the awkwardness sit, right? Just let it sit. And if, and if they say, oh no, I made greens for you and you don't know if, they, if it's actually vegan, just say, no, I'm good, thank you so much. I brought my own food or I already ate, I'm good. I'm, I'm gonna, or um, you know, I'm not hungry right now, I'm just gonna eat when I get home. Just repeat that. You have to let people, be awkward, let the moment be awkward and not have to kind of fill it, right? With defensiveness, with explanation. Just be calm, be easy and do what is best for you in the situation and you set the tone. And I'm telling you from our experience, that's what we do. And you know, you just have to sit with that and know that it can be awkward for people. They, can, they cannot understand, but that's okay. And then the other thing I say um, is, what, what our family learned very early on is that we don't talk about, um, we don't talk about like why we don't eat meat at the table while everyone's eating. We're, we're eating our vegan food and, and maybe everybody else. We do have vegan relatives now, um, but, uh, but most people are, are eating meat and dairy. Like that's not really the time to talk about feces on chicken or you know things like that, right? or the cruelty involved. So what we, we could do that, but we just choose not to, we choose to do it just not at the table. So we will say, um, yeah, we're, you know, we don't get the questions now anymore after 35 years, but earlier on we would say, you know, yeah, we're eating vegan now, we love it. You know, this is the way we wanna eat, we feel better on and on, you know, whatever we wanted to say and then change the subject. Or if they say, well, what's wrong with, meat? What's wrong with chicken? What's wrong with ribs? What's wrong with mac and cheese? Oh, we can talk about it later. Let's talk about it later. We just keep repeating that. And if they want to talk about it later, some folks are just saying that because they feel defensive and they don't want the conversation or some other folks are there and they're like, Lord, I don't want to hear this right now. We just say, let's talk about it later. And if they came up to us later, we would have a conversation. We would recommend books. 
we would give them recipes, all of that, you know, or they would call us later. So you can choose when you want to have these conversations. Just because someone asks you the question doesn't mean you have to engage in that moment. You decide when it's comfortable for you. So that's why I say all of this is about your ease and your confidence. And the more that you practice this and let the awkwardness be there, the easier it will get. So yes. that's my answer, AJ. I know it's yep. a long <laughs> no, It's a great answer. And I agree with everything you said. Dr. Doug Lyle says very similar things. You know, be, uh, no, thank you. I'm full, maybe later. You, you know, no is a complete sentence. And a lot of women have trouble saying no. But you think after 35 years, you know, they, I, I am, I've been vegan for over 45 years. And I have relatives that will just say, you're still following that crazy diet? I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what do they expect? Somebody vegan for 40? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I'm eating at McDonald's. Now. I mean, come on. Right, exactly. But this is this is what I'm saying. This is, you don't, you're, you have no control over that. And you don't know why people are, I mean, you can imagine why people are saying things, but you don't have to engage that. You know, you don't. You can, you, you however you want to respond to that, you respond and keep it moving. Great. Here's a question from Becky, and I, I, if you don't mind, I'd like to answer it too, only because I'm not in my own home today and I can answer it. It's what's your favorite go-to meal? And it's almost lunchtime here and I brought it with me. It's, um, I love to eat roasted hand of yams. I like them about two pounds and steamed broccoli. And I've been eating that every day for lunch for like 12 years and I never get sick of it. That's my favorite go-to meal. And it's really easy to make. What's yours, Tracy? Oh my gosh. Can I just say that my mother loves roasted sweet potatoes, roasted sweet potatoes, baked sweet potatoes. That would be a meal that she would have for sure. Um, she, she loves them. She can eat them every day. So I love that. I'll, I'll tell her if she, if she isn't watching, but, um, my go-to meal, um, probably is a huge wrap. I love wraps. So I'll have some kind of whole grain like black rice. I might have some chickpeas, uh, roasted chickpeas or curry chickpeas. I'll have some dark leafy greens. I'll have avocado. I might have some um, onion, garlic, some dried herb seasonings. It just, you know, depends. But I love a big wrap and I might wrap it in a collard leaf. I might wrap it in a whole grain tortilla and I I, just that combination in my mouth. I love that. Just love it. And all the way some, some spicy sauce. So like some hot sauce, something, some, some seasoning, some condiment with some kit. Nice. Oh, I love it. A condiment with a kit. That's a, you're, you're great. At, you're great at turning a phrase. So Tracy, I know that if somebody's not a female or black, they can't be in your 21 day program, but if somebody wants more of you or to follow you, where, where can we send them? Um, you can send them to um, uh, by any greens necessary. That's my personal website. Um, they can definitely um, keep up with the movement that we're doing uh, with the 10 million Black vegan women movement because we want so we want to share the word. We want to share the word. We want to spread the message. So they can follow us at uh, 10 million Black vegan women org. They can um, share and spread the word to all of the Black women in their lives, and you know this is a this is a safe space for us. Um, and it doesn't mean that you can't uh, be a be a wonderful ally, just as you are, AJ, and having you know having me share as part of this your week of longevity. This is the work that I'm doing right now, and so I encourage you, you know, everyone to share with as many Black women in their lives as possible. Right. Well, like I said, you wrote the book, Ageless Speak, and you, and you live up to the title. So I just want to end with something that I have your permission to share because I've done almost 1,200 episodes in this show and there was only one, well, actually there's only been two uncomfortable, really uncomfortable moments. And one was when I had a guest on and we have a chat feature. I don't know if you can see it, Tracy, but there's a lot of people watching and typing. That's how I'm getting these questions. And somebody had asked if the guest who was a doctor was single and I asked him and he like literally flipped out on the air. So now I always say, say to people, is, it, is there anything you don't want to talk about? But I'm allowed to say that Tracy is not only gorgeous and vegan, but she is currently single. And if you are a fine vegan gentleman, um, contact me and I'll see if I can uh, hook you up because uh, 
she is a Libra, which is a beautiful sign. That's what my dog Bailey is. And uh, not <laughs> comparing to my dog, but it's just a lovely sign. That I, I love, I mean, if I could come back, that's the sign I want to be because they're just, they're just beautiful people inside and out. And so um, we, we have more women watching the show than men, but Hey guys, I'm telling you, she said it on, on Rip Esselson's podcast and she's single. And so I don't know what's wrong with you guys to let her be going <laughs> Um, solo when, when you've got this beautiful young lady, really young lady, uh, to, uh, be, uh, connecting with. So there we said it and it'll be amazing if you get somebody I from the let, show. I will let you know. I am, I will let you know. I am looking and that is a vulnerable thing to be saying for sure, but you know, I'm not going to meet anybody in my living room. So, hey. well, I, you know, and I think it is Tracy's because you're so gorgeous. You're so eloquent. I think maybe men are intimidated by you. I don't know. Maybe I, I, I hope don't not. the okay, not intimidated men step on up. Yeah, come on, guys. You you got you got a true beauty here. Well, Tracy, it's been so great connecting with you again. Thank you so much for your work and for just for being vegan as long as you've been. It's just incredible. Thank you so much. I'm trying to keep up with you, AJ. Thank well, you. Well, I, I hope one day. I, I know your mom's busy, but I'd I'd love to meet her one day, even if it's not for a live show, just to say hello because I know that she's been such a great inspiration to you, and I, she just sounds like an incredible woman. I've I've seen her on the PCRM podcast, and I just adore her. So, I, I, if there's ever an opportunity to meet her or have her on the show, I'd love to connect with her. Thank you. We will definitely make that happen. I I, I assure you. Thank you so Thank much. This no. is Thank you, Tracy. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow for day five of Longevity Week when we have two gorgeous women that are septuagenarians. We have Fran Costigan and Victoria Moran, another couple of ageless vegans. Wonderful. So go on and eat your greens. Bye.